number three which is flow in pipes and this chapter is basically a continuation of the previous chapter which was uh, taught by dr nasrul hadi and i as your lecturer dr moin is going to teach you on flow in pipes and this chapter is basically a continuation of uh, the bernoulli equation the continuity equation and momentum equation and some of the parts are going to be applied in this chapter so it is quite important that you go back and have a refresher of chapter number two and in this chapter the objectives are that first we are going to understand the concept of laminar flow and turbulent flow basically how in a pipe uh, the flow occurs either it is smooth or it is very irregular or haphazard so irregular or haphazard flow is called turbulent flow and uh, something along a streamline and a smoother flow is laminar and how do we differentiate these flows we are going to differentiate these flows by Reynolds number so we are going to learn about the concepts of Reynolds number uh, then once we have uh, known about what is laminar what is turbulent and what is Reynolds then we are going to understand that once uh, water or any fluid which moves through a pipe then what kind of losses it experiences so we are going to understand about the minor losses and the major losses of flow in pipe then once we know about the losses then we are going to determine what are the friction and what are the frictional effects what kind of frictional factors are present and how to determine them and we determine them using the Moody chart or simplified Kohlbrook's equation after learning about the uh, friction factor we are going to learn and calculate how uh, to calculate minor losses major losses pressure losses and head losses and understand what is equivalent length and then we are going to uh, go through some uh, difficult problems for instance which involve a pump and then you've got a pipe and then you've got a tank or something so we are going to understand the whole system of piping network through solving piping systems using Bernoulli equation so this is all about what you are going to learn in this chapter. To, uh, the internal and external flow it is important to know uh, about the terms such as pipes and uh, ducts and uh, such as tubes so it's important to learn how and in what terms they are used so pipes is generally uh, something where flow occurs in a circular cross section so if the cross section is circular then usually we refer to it as pipe usually in pipes uh, fluid or liquid flows but sometimes larger diameter pipes are used for gas transport as well when we talk about ducts ducts are especially used in refrigeration heating and air conditioning and usually uh, the fluid is is a gas and tubes are basically smaller diameter pipes and usually steam flow through it so these terms will be used uh, in this chapter and uh, it will be used descriptively so that once we refer to pipe it will be a circular pipe or if we are going to refer to a duct it would be a rectangular duct so let's move to internal so fluid flow fluid flow can be classified in two kinds of flow number one is internal flow and number two is external flow so what is internal and what is external flow if the fluid is flowing over a surface then this is called external flow and if a fluid is moving in a conduit or a pipe or a duct then this is uh, internal flow so for instance you've got a car okay this is your uh, drawing of your toy car etc this used to draw uh, when you guys were kids and if the flow is flowing over the body okay then this is external flow and if you've got a pipe and water is moving inside and flowing then this is called internal flow this is a pipe sometimes you use air conditioning ducts as well so the ducts is also an example wherein internal flow occurs and there are various examples for internal flow such as pipes and then you've got blood flowing in a heart okay and there is aorta there you've got left ventricle right ventricle and then the blood flows from lungs uh, into the heart etc so there is a complete circulation system all over uh, which is being uh, carried out by your small organism small tissue small organ uh, called heart then you've got oil and gas industries and you've got a huge piping network you can see here you've got thousands of pipes and these pipes either air is flowing or steam is flowing or sometimes of cooling water is flowing etc then there is drainage etc so there you've got different types of piping systems and networks available then uh, you've got uh, even more smaller systems like a cooling system of a car or a radiator which we will see in the next example and air conditioning example is an example of a duct du ct so this is all about flow uh, in internal flow and external flow Here are examples for internal flow so here is an example of a hard flow 
and the fluid is flowing inside the heart there is one is oxygenated fluid and one is deoxygenated fluid so here is an example of a fluid flow in a pipe and here you can see that you've got a hot and cold water mixing up to get a different or intermediate temperature for example of uh, internal external flow as well so what is happening is that in there is internal flow and pipes uh, through the radiator and then there is a stream of air uh, which is being forced by a fan okay and uh, this is external flow so combination of external and internal flow helps us run over so here is an example of uh, a flow over an external body or an external cylinder and it looks like initially the flow is laminar but once uh, the fluid moves across the body then it kind of becomes kind of a zigzag so this could be a transition so basically initially what happens is the fluid may flow laminar way then there is a transition period and then it could become turbulent so how to determine whether the fluid is laminar transitional or turbulent it is based on this Reynolds number which we are going to learn in this whenever you are going to be asked about laminar flow you are going to say that laminar flow is characterized by smooth streamline highly ordered motion and usually it is shorter in length and this normally appears in high viscous fluids such as oil, uh, very thick uh, glycerine, thick fluids uh, such as honey. Likewise, the turbulent flow is characterized by rough streamlines, highly disordered motion and most of the flows in reality such as lakes, sea, flowing rivers, uh, exhaust etc. are usually turbulent. And this is due to, as I said earlier, momentum, high momentum and high causing high friction. Whereas transitional flow, transition flow is basically a transition from laminar to turbulent. Okay. And usually it is ignored in calculation because some So we can verify the existence of these uh, laminar flow, transition flow and turbulent flow by injecting some dye. So if, they, if I've got a pipe and I'm going to inject some dye and ink or something inside then I can visualize the flow so this is what uh, a British engineer Osborne Reynolds he did in 1880s he did it over a hundred years ago and what we he saw was the existence of these laminar transitional and turbulence flow so what happens is that when we put a dye in a pipe and where a fluid is flowing then what happens is that we observe that the dye streak forms a straight line okay it is a straight and smooth line at very low velocities and this is laminar flow sometimes we might see a little bit of fluctuations but that's uh, it it becomes back to smoother uh, streamlined flow so this is called laminar flow <laughs> And then there are some bursts which happen in transition flow. This is when the flow wants to transform to a more rapid movement turbulent flow. Turbulent flow is basically characterized by rapid zigzags and disorderly uh, flow and it becomes fully uh, disordered and zigzag. And this is a turbulent flow. These zigzags and dispersion of the dye are indicative of fluctuations in the main flow and rapid mixing of uh, fluid particles so what's happened is that if you've got a pipe and initially it was moving streamlined then there was transitional and then there was rapid uh, inter movement so what happens is the dye mixes with the water and becomes the, uh, changes the color of the water so this rapid movement is basically intermolecular uh, mixing so this intense mixing this intense mixing is basically turbulent flow as a result of rapid fluctuation and it enhances the momentum transfer it enhances momentum transfer between the fluid particles so it enhances the momentum transfer between fluid particles and what happens is that more of the water particles are basically going to strike and try to move to the walls creating more friction and when there is more friction then what happens is that when I'm going to pump water 
I've got a pump here okay then I need more power to overcome these frictional effects so the friction factor reaches a maximum value when the flow is fully turbulent okay so when at which values of Reynolds number are these uh, flow uh, changing so basically for a round number less than 2300 the flow is laminar between 2300 and 4000 the flow is transitional and larger than uh, 4000 is uh, turbulent flow so what is this re okay, so what the question is what is a Reynolds number and why this number distinguishes these flow so Reynolds number number is denoted by R E R E and this is equals to the ratio of inertial forces whole divided by the viscous forces and the formula is average V average into diameter whole divided by viscosity kinematic or if you want to convert it into dynamic vis viscosity this comes out to be density v average diameter whole divided by nu <laughs> so here the rho is density d is internal diameter of the pipe okay and this is the average velocity remember that we have got a pipe okay and when we have got motion then the velocity profile looks like this because of no slip condition here the velocity is considered to be zero because of considering the frictional effect so the velocity profile looks like this so what we do is basically we take the average so we take the average v average so the formula here is rho vd over nu and nu is mu is sorry kinematic once again this is uh, dynamic viscosity this is kinematic one so once again it is a ratio of inertial forces whole divided by the viscous forces rho vd whole divided by mu so uh, these are some of the ranges for laminar transition and turbulent and we need to understand how these transitions and what are these uh, Reynolds number 2300 etc. So first we need to understand that when laminar happens. Laminar happens when we talk about Reynolds number. Then laminar happens when the inertial forces are not dominant. Only the viscous forces are dominant. That is why very thick and viscous fluids have laminar flow why because viscous forces are dominant when the viscous forces are dominant then the Reynolds number decreases when the Reynolds number decreases or it is less than 2300 then we have uh, laminar flow so at small or moderate Reynolds number however the viscous forces are large enough to suppress the fluctuations which are caused by inertial uh, forces okay and what happens in turbulent flow so in terminal flow the Reynolds number is high because the inertial forces let's say forces inertia are very high and viscous forces forces due to viscous are not high enough to suppress the inertial forces so at large Reynolds number the inertial forces inertial forces also proportional to fluid density and velocity square so these viscous forces cannot prevent uh, random and fluctuations in the fluid so these forces fv 
they cannot prevent the random fluctuations that is why transition uh, sorry turbulent flow occurs now the now the critical point is that the Reynolds number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called critical Reynolds number R C R. this is very important once again I will repeat the Reynolds number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called critical Reynolds number okay and you should know the Reynolds number R E has no units it is dimensionless so now that we know that Reynolds number R E is equals to rho V D whole divided by mu okay so this is diameter right for a pipe internal diameter but what happens if we're going to uh, see flow in rectangular or square shapes then what will happen when we have rectangular or square shapes then we use hydraulic diameter hydraulic diameter is denoted by dh and this is equals to 4 times cross sectional area whole divided by internal parameter so let's say that this rectangle has dimension a uh, height and uh, the width is b then rectangles hydraulic area is equals to 4 times the area area is a into b divided by parameter parameter is 2 times a plus b this comes out to be 2 a b whole divided by a plus b this is hydraulic diameter for rectangle if you talk about square hydraulic diameter for square then we have got here is a and here is a so, so the area 4 times area is 4 a square divided by parameter parameter is 4 a so the hydraulic diameter comes out to be a so remember that uh, the Reynolds number depends on diameter or hydraulic diameter and uh, although it is not uh, basically given but usually the uh, frictional effects also are comes to place due to surface roughness or a or vibration also are the causes of fluctuations in Reynolds number so it, we usually assume that the flow does not have surface roughness and there are no pipe vibrations and there are no fluctuations in the upstream flow so otherwise if you if you take into consideration these factors then maybe the Reynolds number might fluctuate anyways this was all about hydraulic diameter